pump muscle. So what we normally think now is when uh, somebody jumps in into the air, jump, just jumps, jumps up and down, their muscles and their will is causing them to jump. But what about this? What if you have anti-jump muscles and that you flex by relaxing these anti-jump muscles, you fly into the air. Um, these are the these are the, this you know this is the way to look at things from the point of view of Hume. Um, although that, that thing about the anti-jump muscles it has to be said is completely mad, but it, I think it does make a point. So importantly, direct perception of causality happening is not possible. All that can be described is a pattern of behaviour. Uh, which will become a provisional law of the movement of these billiard balls. Uh, causality has still not been proven. The questions set by Hume represent the apex of, imp of the empiricist movement. He's the grand master of the empiricists. He's the last great empiricist because he's taken this line of reasoning to, well, <laughs> you've got to say it's logical conclusion. Um, He's exhausted the mind. He's worked out the the, the seed of this approach um, to knowing. People who come after him uh, are not empiricists. After him, philosophy and thinking about thinking is dominated by the German idealists who have a, who have a different approach. And with Kant and people like that, and we're going to deal with those uh, in subsequent uh, lectures and in subsequent reading. And that's throughout the 19th century. So, so the final phase of this talk now, let's look at the, the questions that uh, Hume sets and which he doesn't answer and which have been argued over ever since. Uh, the whole of 19th century I German idealism is started off by trying to answer the questions that uh, Hume sets about causality. How do we understand the causal relationship between mind and body? Does the body cause the mind to be, as strict philosophical materialists, pre-Socratic pre philosophers would say? Or does consciousness pre-exist and cause or necessitate the body, as religious thinkers and ontological thinkers say? In the beginning there was the word, it says in the Bible. Um, and somehow this word was sublimated or crystallized in physical beings which are like vessels for for the mind so what comes first body or mind is the body causing the mind to be or is pure mind uh, soul if you want to say ghost if you want to say uh, is pure mind causing the body to be what's the causality question two um, how can the present moment, this present moment now, which does exist, how can that have been caused by the past? The past doesn't exist. It doesn't exist anymore. It certainly doesn't exist in any way that can be directly verified or investigated. Likewise, how can the future, which does not exist and likewise cannot be perceived or be investigated, how can that be caused by the present. Another question. Why does causality, apparent causality, have stability? Why if I drop my pen on the floor today, will it drop in the same way tomorrow? Why? Why? Um, why are these apparent causal relationships um, stable? Is that just a mental phenomena, or does nature just go around doing the same thing over and over again? Everything else we seem to know about nature indicates that nature constantly changes, constantly evolves. Um, Hume rejects all a priori principles of the sort. We can just assume, we can just say causation exists. He rejects any synthetic a priori arguments of the type causation is necessary for perception therefore perception is possible sorry 
um, I'll say that again in my notes, causation is necessary for perception. In other words, if there's no causation, then nothing makes any sense. Um, therefore, if perception is possible, if we are perceiving things, then that presupposes that causation must exist. This is a type of ontological argument, and it is used by Immanuel Kant to criticise Hume later on. Let's run through it again. This is a synthetic a priori argument. In other words, it's induction from a pre-existing idea. And the argument is of the type, causation is necessary for perception. Therefore, if perception is possible, causation exists. And he says that causation could only happen in the imagination. Um, in, you know, in rejecting synthetic a priori of, uh, propositions, Hume is saying that causation can only happen in the mind. But I've said that about ten times, which he calls habit of mind. It's a habit of mind attributing causation, thinking that one thing is causing another. Hume's law, um, he says it's impossible to derive ought, that something ought to happen, from is. Um, so take the example of the National Lottery. I've seen people doing this. But they will, you know, the numbers that come out of the National Lottery is a sort of is type statement. The, the row of numbers is all those numbers. Now some people will say, because those numbers have come and then those numbers and those numbers and like the number 63 or something hasn't come out ever or hasn't come out for a very long time, it ought to come out. Well, that's wrong according to Hume's law. There is nothing, there is no causality between the fact that number 64 or whatever number you like hasn't come out before with it coming out now. If the number 64 came out this week and if you said there it is it was bound to come out this week it's been caused to come out because it hasn't come out for such and such a long time that's nonsense according to Hume's law you can't derive that something ought to happen from the fact that it previously did happen um, and the tendency for people to attribute ought uh, to an is statement comes from a, a kind of mental laziness. Chapter 10 uh, of uh, the treatise on human understanding, brilliant, brilliant chapter about miracles. And I would say this is pretty vital reading for journalists. His view on causation in, in a way is that everything is a miracle. Everything's a miracle, everything's a coincidence. If you're uh, watching a train and it goes into a tunnel, it comes out the other side of the tunnel, that's a kind of miracle. Just because it's happened before in the human system does 